Hello, this is Neil Buchanan with Rock Our World. I'm down here in uh, California for a few weeks. At my, my dad and mom bought a place down in Indio for going back quite a number of years, and my dad would like us to use it. So anyway, my wife and I are trying this out for a few weeks down in uh, the middle of winter up in Canada and it's a lot nicer weather down here in, in Indio with surrounded by palm trees and a few birds singing and so on. Uh, anyway I wanted to cover a topic that's been on my heart for some time about the path of life. Uh, Yeshua talked about it in, in a parable and uh, in parables, uh, he even explained he didn't he didn't speak in parables to make things clear. He it was kind of like a coded language, and uh, my ideas are are go something like this: as the last days unfold, God will give us greater understanding of the of the coded language, and uh, it was meant to be hidden for a certain amount of time and that the as the rest the time of the restoration of all things unfolds that there would be greater and greater understanding of these things as people search as the Lord stir, stirs up hunger in our hearts and so on anyway the path of life went uh, somewhat like this that uh, that it's narrow and very few people find uh, their way on this path of life and broad is the way that leads to destruction and it, in my first you know I'm going to keep referring to this 23 years I, I spent in the worldwide church of God it was a good place God put me there uh, a good place to begin my walk for if nothing else the the strong strong encouragement to read the scriptures and uh, I did that. I, I read through the Bible from one end to the other, or the scriptures, uh, from one end to the other, uh, quite a number of times. And I s s did studying. I know I st study uh, topics. And as the years have progressed, I, my understanding has increased. And, uh, and when uh, you, you have a basis for which, on, on, upon which God can teach you things, if you don't, if you've never read anything in the scriptures, or very little, or been selective, how can it, the Lord can't teach you things about uh, the spot you've never read? Uh, so it's really important to to get reading, uh, and then always ask God to give you understanding. And for me, this has been forty going on forty three years, and uh, I ho hope. My hope and my belief is that as new, newer people come on board, that it won't take as long to learn these things, and they can learn from us old guys also. But back to this path of life, humans have this proclivity to be in one ditch or the other, and they, uh, let's say they're in, in one ditch, and they realize, hey, I'm in the ditch, so instead of cl climbing out, and going on the on the top of the road, this narrow path, they cross the road and go in the other ditch. So that's s sort of what we tend to do. And uh, the going back to what uh, what I believed when I first started reading these things, and what I was led to believe, or the implication was that uh, very few people are going to be saved. Well, that's wrong. Uh, the path of life is is talk, talking about the greatest rewards in the kingdom of God. Uh, the, our Lord wants us to uh, go for the prize, the, the gold prize. He wants us to go for the top rewards. He's encouraging us to do that. He definitely doesn't want us to take the poorest rewards in the kingdom of God. One of the... There's two people that help me to understand uh, these things and the, the real meaning of of uh, this 
idea of the greatest reward in the kingdom of God. Uh, Eddie Chumney in his book, Who is the Bride of Christ, whom I've mentioned before, and uh, the, the visions that Rick Joyner was given in the three books, The Call, The Final Quest, and The Sword, Sword and the Torch. And there was more in uh, just short, very short version, visions in The Harvest. But uh, Rick tended to put a lot of his own theology in the earlier writings, and the Lord was putting pressure on him to leave his theology out of it. He just wanted him to relay the message. And uh, so Rick was better at that in these last three books. Nonetheless, Rick got to visit with a number of people in paradise that had gone to heaven, and there was uh, quite a number of them their experience was that they had done a poor job of their walk. They had got caught up in all kinds of different things. And one of the more common ones was to begin believing that uh, they were important, more important in their own eyes than they actually were. And this idea that things from a heavenly perspective, look very, very different than from an earthly perspective. We humans see things one way, and God sees things very differently. Nonetheless, a lot of these people missed out on the great rewards they could have had by getting caught up in all kinds of things. Anyway, very good idea to read these books and get a better idea of what I'm talking about. Uh, nonetheless, the path of life is... What is referring to the, the few people that find this, the road and stay on it instead of going from one ditch to the other ditch. And then maybe they find even that they're in the other ditch, so they climb out and they go back into the first ditch. Anyway, the, the, the broad road that leads to destruction is talking about the, the destruction or the loss of the rewards you could have had if you had avoided the pitfalls if you did accepted advice sought the the full guidance of our lord and uh, oh, there's uh, all kinds of ways to put it but uh, to uh, to gain uh, this reward that that the lord really wants us to to achieve or, or to latch on to. I'm going to call it to become the bride of Christ. And as uh, these visions and these books I'm referring to, uh, they try to explain there's actually a second uh, reward or a grouping, let's call it. Uh, I'll, I'll even use the, the analogy Yeshua used as the bride that there's the second group would be the bridesmaids that uh, is still a great reward it's not the, the greatest reward in the kingdom but it's still a great reward so there that's a much great, greater group than the bride of Christ but the vast majority of believers both in the Christian world and the Jewish world uh, end up in this third category of uh, of destruction and that doesn't mean they they go to hell. That means that they they lose out on this great reward that was offered to them through their poor judgment, and they end up in the quite a long ways away from God's throne. That that is the their eternal reward is limited, and. Uh, Anyway, strongly encourage you to read these visions that Rick Joyner had. He had came across very clearly how the vision was presented. And uh, the encouragement to all believers is to work hard at this to avoid these pitfalls of humanistic thinking. And, and uh, so I'm going to go to one of these right away. Uh, the, the Christian church. I'm more familiar with the Christian church than the Jewish church. Uh, but they'll be able to, Jewish people will be able to relate to this, that uh, we're taught this idea that, uh, a humanistic idea that 
all we need to do is is uh, is love, and that is true. That that's the most important thing that we're to do. Uh, but it's not the only thing that we're to do. That we don't really have to. The teaching is we really don't have to do anything but uh, accept Jesus as our Savior and accept. Uh, if you were Jewish, I guess you could put it. Accept that God is your God and try your best to follow the traditions you're taught and so on. But God wants us to go much beyond that. He wants us to study these scriptures that we're talking about, the Torah, the prophets, and the writings, and in the Christian world, uh, the uh, inspired commentary. I've referred to this before, The what Christians call the New Testament. It has great value. Uh, try and ditch the idea that that's been taught that the law is done away with. You cannot find that in the in the inspired commentary or the the apostolic writings or what Christians call the New Testament. It can't be found. It's just an idea that was proposed and widely accepted. And uh, I, I'm going to say it. It's the greatest deterrent. Uh, that that Jewish people have of accepting Yeshua as their Savior because he's been misrepresented. The Jewish people know very well that the Torah will never be done away with. The Torah meaning that the teachings and instructions of our Lord or of, of Yahweh, uh, who is our Lord. Jesus Christ is, is Yahweh. He is the God who uh, gave the Torah to Moses. I, I've gone over these things before in, in uh, former episodes. Nonetheless, back to this idea that uh, Christianity is sold, uh, has been in the business of selling an easy religion. That all you got have to do is love. Don't worry about keeping any rules. Uh, just go to find a good church and just go and do what they tell you to do. Well, uh, why would there be 35,000 churches to choose from that all disagree with each other and in the I've pointed this out in the Jewish world there's uh, fewer choices but it's the same kind of idea it's the teachings of men that are there what our God wants us to do is put more effort into it take time to read the scriptures take time to uh, give it your own thought and uh, it the sooner you start doing this, the better. Start asking God to reveal things to you supernaturally. And uh, what you'll find is that you learn a great deal more. And if you keep pushing, you will learn more and more and more. And that's the road that Jesus was referring to, where you stay on the road. Let the Holy Spirit guide you down this road. Let uh, our Lord Yahweh lead us down this road. I'm not sure how the Jewish people would accept what I'm trying to convey here, but uh, their God is not a different God. Jesus Christ is the only God that's, uh, or Yeshua, is the only God that has ever dealt with human beings directly, uh, other than the Holy Spirit. Anyway, I've talked about all these kind of different things. I better stick to one topic here. So, uh, this road we want to stay on, uh, essentially you, you have to get to the place where you av avoid the teachings of, of churches. They, uh, in Rick Joyner's vision, a church, the church is depicted as a prison, and the idea is that you needed to escape the prison. And once you do, you get out into the wilderness, and behold, the wilderness is full of small churches or small prisons and the idea is to to try and uh, as make your way around all these prisons and go through this journey in the wilderness and uh, it's a challenging idea this road to eternal life but the the full guidance comes from the Holy Spirit and from our Lord and it's all a supernatural journey. So the encouragement is uh, to ask the Lord what you're supposed to be doing. Churches have their place, and I'm going to say they have more of a place in the beginning years of, of a 
of a believer's walk. And that the encouragement is to go out into the wilderness because that's where we're going to learn what God wants us to learn. And that's the path of life that brings the full reward is to take this jaunt, take this journey out into the wilderness. I also want to encourage believers uh, to watch Sid Roth. Uh, we've been finding in the last number of months, increasingly, and whether this is Sid has changed or we have, that he is a gathering place for uh, wonderful testimonies of people that God is working with supernaturally. And their testimonies are bringing truth and understanding to the, the body of Christ. So very strong encouragement to watch Sid Roth, all of his... Uh, 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 archives of former programs, say over the past year, and uh, tune into him regularly. So I think I've covered enough for one episode. I'll, signing out, Neil Buchanan with Rock Our World.